Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is time variant sinusoidal waveforms, including phase shift. Our objective is to define phase shift and learn to evaluate time variant sinusoidal waveforms, including positive or negative angular phase shift. This lecture is predicated on the assumption the viewers watch the sine waves, amplitude and effective values, and period and frequency lectures, all available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. This lecture presumes the viewer is familiar with radians, degrees, and conversion between these positional measurements, has more than a passing familiarity with a sine function, and can calculate peak, peak-to-peak, -peak and effective magnitudes, as well as calculate period and frequency and evaluate a time-variant sinusoidal function. Thus far, we've been operating under the libertarian presumption that all sine waves are created equal. However, this isn't always the case. Sine waves, quite like your peers, are often given head starts or held back for various reasons, and as a result, this positive or negative shift can influence their behavior in the present. If you recall, one can describe a time-variant sinusoidal function using properties like peak value and frequency. Assuming this time-variant sinusoidal function represents output voltage, one can use the general expression of V of T equals voltage peak times the sine of 360 times the frequency times the time of interest, where the values inside the parentheses simply convert time of interest into an angle value usable by the sine function. This general format does not include a phase shift and assumes the sine wave initiates operation at zero degrees. Recall that the circular origin of the sine wave assumes the far right side is the starting point for circular travel in a counterclockwise direction. Including a phase shift, simply assumes our travel does not initiate at the origin, but rather at some other angular position in advance or behind the origin. A positive phase shift is simply the addition of this angular differential to the terms inside the parentheses and shifts our analysis counterclockwise by that amount. A negative phase shift, in contrast, is simply subtraction of this angular differential to the terms inside the parentheses and shifts our analysis clockwise by that amount. Including phase shift in the general expression, we simply add or subtract the phase shift to the terms inside the parentheses. For example, consider a time variant sinusoidal with a 100 volt peak, a period of 15 milliseconds, and it happens to get a positive 30 degree head start to the day. This period corresponds to a frequency of 1 over 15 milliseconds, or approximately 66.7 Hz. The time variant voltage expression will resolve itself into V of T equals 100 volts times sine of 360 times 66.7 times the time of interest plus 30 degrees. It makes sense that a time variant sine wave with a positive 30 degree head start initiates at time T equals 0 with a value of 100 volts times the sine of 30 or 0.5 times 100 or 50 volts. Additionally, it makes sense that if this time variant waveform underwent a full oscillation over a period of 15 milliseconds, it would also end at 50 volts. Sine waves, like circles, start where they end and end where they start. If we were to overlay a full cycle of a waveform with a positive 30 degree phase shift, with one with the same amplitude and frequency without a phase shift, you'll note that absolutely nothing has changed about the nature of the sine wave, only it's been shifted, hence the phrase phase shift, positive 30 degrees in advance, to the left, or forward. The positive 30 degree head start essentially means the sine wave gets up 30 degrees earlier to start the day. You might want to pause the lecture and stare at this graph for a little bit to get the feel of what a positive phase shift implies. Note the x-axis isn't reflective of angular position, but rather time. Moving on, using the time variant expression accounting for phase shift, one can calculate output voltage magnitude at specific times. For example, at 2.4 milliseconds, one would substitute 2.4 milliseconds into our expression to arrive at 100 volts times the sine of 57.6 degrees plus 30 degrees, or 100 volts times the sine of 87.6 degrees, meaning that at a time ordinarily corresponding to 57.6 degrees, this function has a value equivalent to a normal sine wave 30 degrees in advance at 87.6 degrees, ordinarily just shy of the peak value. 
As can be expected, this results in an output voltage just shy of peak at approximately 99.9 volts. Similarly, at 4 milliseconds, it could be demonstrated the output voltage would be equal to 80.9 volts. Finally, at 8 milliseconds, it could be demonstrated the output voltage would be equal to approximately negative 66.9 volts. One could perform this analysis for increasing number of points and arrive at the same conclusion we observed earlier. Nothing has changed, only the waveform has been shifted positive 30 degrees to the left or forward in time. Given we can convert between degrees in time, you'll note the positive 30 degree phase shift can also be measured in units of time. Given the sine wave has a period of 15 milliseconds, one can perform a unit conversion to find that a 30 degree phase shift is roughly equivalent to 1.25 milliseconds, meaning its zero crossing going positive is 1.25 milliseconds in advance or in front of our start time. Let's now examine the consequences of negative phase shift. If a positive phase shift is to be likened to showing up ahead of time, a negative phase shift is quite obviously the opposite, being consistently late and behind the times. Does this remind you of a certain lab partner? A negative phase shift is simply the subtraction of that phase shift amount, thus retarding or slowing the sine wave start by this amount. Consider a time variant sinusoidal voltage waveform with an 80 volt peak value, a period of 10 milliseconds, and it happens to be delayed by negative 15 degrees whether because its car didn't start, or because it was too hungover, or some other equally lame excuse. Regardless, the zero crossing going positive that traditionally characterized the start of a sine wave simply shows up slightly late. A 10 millisecond period corresponds to a frequency of 100 hertz. The time variant expression resolves itself into V of t equals 80 volts times the sine of 360 times 100 times the time of interest minus 15 degrees. As previously, it makes sense that a time variant sine wave with a negative 15 degree delay initiates time at t equals zero with a value of 80 volts times the sine of negative 15 degrees, or 80 volts times negative 0.2588, or negative 20.7 volts. Additionally, it makes sense that if this time variant voltage waveform underwent a full oscillation over a period of 10 milliseconds, it would also end at negative 20.7 volts. Sine waves like circles, start where they end and end where they start. As previously, if we were to overlay a cycle of a waveform with a negative 15 degree phase shift with one with the same amplitude and frequency, including no phase shift, you note that absolutely nothing has changed about the nature of the sinusoidal function, only it's been shifted, hence the phrase phase shift, negative 15 to the right or behind. The negative 15 degree delay means the sine wave stays in bed an extra 15 degrees and its zero crossing going positive occurs 15 degrees later than you'd expect. You might want to pause the lecture and stare at this graph for a little bit to get the feel of what a negative phase shift implies. Again, given we can convert between degrees in time, you'll note that the negative 15 degree phase shift can also be measured in units of time. Given the sine wave with a period of 10 milliseconds, one could perform a unit conversion to find that negative 15 degree phase shift is roughly equivalent to 416.7 microseconds, meaning its zero crossing going positive is 416.7 microseconds, or roughly 0.4 milliseconds behind or delayed with respect to our start time for the analysis. Using the expression accounting for phase shift, one can also calculate output voltage magnitude at specific times as we did previously. For example, at 2 milliseconds, one would substitute 2 milliseconds into our expression to arrive at 80 volts times the sine of 360 times 100 times 2 milliseconds minus 15 degrees, or 80 volts times the sine of 72 minus 15 degrees, or 80 volts sine 57 degrees, meaning that at a time ordinarily corresponding to 72 degrees, this sine wave has a value equivalent to a normal sine wave at only 57 degrees. As can be expected, this results in output voltage of 80 volts times 0.8387, or approximately 61.7 volts. Similarly, at 6 milliseconds, it can be demonstrated the output voltage would be approximately equal to negative 28.7 volts. One could perform this analysis for increasing number of points and arrive at the same conclusion we observed earlier. Really, nothing has changed, only the sine wave has been shifted negative 15 degrees to the right. Let's try some illustrated example problems.
puts your understanding of time-variant sinusoidal functions incorporating phase shifts to the test by solving for the desired quantities. In addition to solving for the desired quantities, see if you can draw a rough sketch of what these time-variant sinusoidal functions incorporating phase shifts look like on a graph. Keep in mind, I'm not asking for numerically precise graphs, but rather a quick sketch of what that particular phase shift implies. Note in example problem 3, I've drawn the waveform for you and expect you to root out the details. Pay attention as I've hidden some traps in this particular example set. It should go without stating that you can differentiate between properties like peak, peak-to-peak, -peak, effective, or RMS values in period and frequency. By all means, pause the lecture and give this your best shot. If you're tracking, you should have arrived at the following results. The first waveform has a peak value of 325.3 volts, a period of 20 milliseconds, and a phase shift of positive 10 degrees, meaning it'll be shifted 10 degrees to the left or in advance. A period of 20 milliseconds corresponds to a frequency of 50 hertz. The general expression results in V of T being equal to 325.3 volts times the sine of 360 times 50 times the time of interest plus 10 degrees. Substituting 3 milliseconds into our expression results in an output voltage of approximately 292.4 volts as this illustrated operation shows. When we draw a rough sketch of this waveform with respect to time, you'll note the waveform completes a full oscillation over a period of 20 milliseconds. However, its zero crossing going positive is shifted positive 10 degrees or 555.6 microseconds forward or to the left. Note that the time value corresponding to a positive 10 degree phase shift is arrived at by a unit conversion as this illustrated operation shows. The second waveform has an RMS or effective value of 120 volts, a frequency of 60 hertz, and a negative 20 degree phase shift. An effective value of 120 volts corresponds to a peak value of approximately 169.7 volts. Hopefully you did fall into this trap. Peak value is always greater than RMS. A frequency of 60 Hz corresponds to a period of approximately 16.7 milliseconds. And a phase shift of negative 20 degrees means it will be shifted 20 degrees to the right or behind. The general expression results in V of T being equal to 169.7 volts times the sine of 360 times 60 times the time of interest minus 20 degrees. Substituting 4 milliseconds into our expression results in an output voltage of approximately 155.5 volts, as this illustrated operation shows. When we draw a rough sketch of this waveform with respect to time, you'll note the waveform completes a full oscillation over a period of 16.7 milliseconds. However, its zero crossing going positive is shifted negative 20 degrees, or 925.9 microseconds, backward or to the right. Note the time value corresponding to a negative 20 degree phase shift is arrived at by a unit conversion as this illustrated operation shows. The third example problem is the same song in reverse. Here we're given a picture and being asked to solve for a particular value. It looks like it's got a peak to peak value of 400 volts, has a period of 12 milliseconds, and its zero crossing going positive is shifted to the left or forward by one millisecond. It looks like we've got to do some conversions. A peak-to-peak -peak value of 400 volts corresponds to a peak value of half that, or 200 volts. A period of 12 milliseconds corresponds to a frequency of approximately 83.3 hertz. And a shift of 1 millisecond, given a 12 millisecond period, corresponds to a phase shift of positive 30 degrees, as this illustrated operation shows. Again, it's just a unit conversion, folks. Don't freak out. Don't make this too hard. If the whole waveform completes a 360 degree cycle in 12 milliseconds, it makes sense that 1 millisecond to the left is 1 12th of 360, or a positive 30 degree phase shift. The general expression results in V of T being equal to 200 volts times sine of 360 times 83.3 times the time of interest plus 30 degrees. Substituting 1.5 milliseconds into our expression, results in an output voltage of approximately 193.2 volts as this illustrated operation shows. Hopefully this set of illustrated example problems went smoothly. If it didn't, by all means rewind and revisit the explanation again and take another shot. Moving on. Phase shifting, as implied by its title, simply shifts or slides a waveform left or right and doesn't change its amplitude, period, or frequency. However, 
values at specific times will reflect this phase shift. When two or more waveforms incorporating phase shifts, one can establish a relationship between the waveforms. Importantly, the waveforms must necessarily have the same frequency. Consider waveform V1 of T, characterized by the following expression. 150 volts times the sine of 360 times 40 times the time of interest, plus a phase shift of 0 degrees. V1 of T has a peak value of 150 volts, a frequency of 40 hertz, a period of 1 over 40, or 25 milliseconds, and a phase shift of 0 degrees, meaning it's not phase shifted and its zero crossing going positive occurs at 0 degrees or 0 milliseconds. Consider another waveform in yellow, V2 of T, characterized by the following expression. V2 of T equals 150 volts times the sine of 360 times 40 times the time of interest plus 35 degrees. V2 of T also has a peak value of 150 volts, a frequency of 40 hertz, and a period of 25 milliseconds. The only thing that differentiates V2 from V1 is that it has a positive 35 degree phase shift, meaning that it's shifted positive 35 degrees in advance. Positive 35 degrees inside a 25 millisecond period corresponds to a leftward time shift of roughly 2.4 milliseconds as its operation chain illustrates. Again, it's a unit conversion. Don't make this hard. When both these waveforms are placed in the same graph, there is an obvious relationship between the two waveforms, that of relativity. Relativity, as the name implies, relates two quantities with one another, and importantly, implies that one of the pairs is used as a frame of reference from which the other is measured. With reference to your lab partner, you are an attractive, intelligent, and desirable individual. This relativity is also double-edged in nature. With reference to me, I mean, let's be honest, you look and smell like one of those grotesquely inbred boss-level characters in a bass fishing video game, and that's being polite. Given V1 and V2 are in all aspects other than phase shift identical to one another, it is immediately evident that V2 zero crossing going positive is 35 degrees in front of V1 zero crossing going positive, and V2 can be said to lead V1 by 35 degrees. Conversely, given V1 zero crossing going positive is 35 degrees behind V2 zero crossing going positive, it can also be said that V1 lags V2 by 35 degrees. Both statements, V2 leads V1 by 35 degrees and V1 lags V2 by 35 degrees are simultaneously true, being merely different ways of saying the same thing. Here's another illustrated example problem for relative phase shift. Although they must necessarily have the same frequency for phase shift to have any meaning, waveforms needn't have the same magnitude nor even be the same quantity for there to be a relative phase shift to one another. Consider a voltage waveform, V of t, characterized by the following expression. V of t equals 169.7 volts times the sine of 360 times 60 times the time of interest. V of t has a peak value of 169.7 volts, a frequency of 60 hertz, a period of 1 over 60, or approximately 16.7 milliseconds, and a phase shift of 0 degrees, meaning it's not phase shifted and its zero crossing going positive occurs at 0 degrees or 0 milliseconds. Consider a current waveform I of t in blue, characterized by the following expression. I of t equals 200 milliampers times the sine of 360 times 60 times the time of interest minus 20 degrees. I of t has a peak value of 200 milliampers, a frequency of 60 hertz, a period of approximately 16.7 milliseconds, and a phase shift of negative 20 degrees, meaning it's shifted negative 20 degrees backwards. 20 degrees inside a 16.7 millisecond period corresponds to a rightward time shift of roughly 925.9 microseconds as this operation chain illustrates. When both these waveforms are placed on the same graph, there is an obvious relationship between the two. It's immediately evident that V of T zero crossing going positive is 20 degrees in front of I of T zero crossing going positive, and voltage can be said to lead current by 20 degrees. Conversely, given I of T zero crossing going positive 20 degrees behind V of T zero crossing going positive, it can also be said that current lags voltage by 20 degrees. Both statements, voltage leads current by 20 degrees, 
and current lags voltage by 20 degrees are simultaneously true. Which statement do I prefer? This one, current lags voltage by 20 degrees. Why? Because voltage is the cause and current is the effect. It makes sense to measure the effect with reference to the cause. We'll examine AC Ohm's law and more in greater detail in later lectures. Here's yet another illustrated example of relativity, only this time both waveforms include phase shifts. Consider a voltage waveform in red, V of t, characterized by the following expression. V of t equals 21.7 volts times the sine of 360 times 35 times the time of interest plus 23.6 degrees. V of t has a peak value of 21.7 volts, a frequency of 35 hertz, a period of 1 over 35 or approximately 28.6 milliseconds, and a phase shift of plus 23.6 degrees, meaning it's shifted 23.6 degrees forward. 23.6 degrees inside a 28.6 millisecond period corresponds to a leftward time shift of roughly 1.9 milliseconds as the operation chain illustrates. V of t zero crossing going positive occurs 23.6 degrees to the left or 1.9 milliseconds in advance. The current waveform I of t is characterized by the following expression. I of t equals 71.4 milliamperes times the sine of 360 times 35 times the time of interest plus 55.7 degrees. I of t has a peak value of 71.4 milliamperes, a frequency of 35 hertz, a period of 28.6 milliseconds, and a phase shift of positive 55.7 degrees, meaning it's shifted positive 55.7 degrees forward. 55.7 degrees inside a 28.6 millisecond period corresponds to a leftward time shift of roughly 4.4 milliseconds as this operation chain illustrates. When both these waveforms are placed on the same graph, there's an obvious relationship between the two. It's immediately evident that I of t zero crossing going positive is in front of V of t zero crossing going positive and current can be said to lead voltage. By how much does current lead? It should be obvious that current leads voltage by the absolute difference of 32.1 degrees. Similarly, it can also be said that voltage lags current by 32.1 degrees. Both statements are simultaneously true. However, I prefer framing this using voltage as my reference from which current is measured, since voltage is the cause and current is the effect. In summary, current leads voltage by 32.1 degrees. Here's another illustrated example problem. This one again making use of two waveforms, both including phase shifts, but without all the gory details. Looks like the plot of V of t in red shows its phase shift at positive 28 degrees, and the plot of I of t in blue shows its phase shift at negative 12 degrees. What's the relationship of current with respect to voltage? Does it lead or does it lag, and by how much? Don't make this hard. Too often, students make this unnecessarily complicated. Just look at the picture. Figure it out. Which one is in front of the other, and by how much? Hopefully you realize that current zero crossing going positive is behind voltages zero crossing going positive, and current can be said to lag voltage. By how much does current lag? It should be obvious that current lags by the absolute difference of 40 degrees. If you're interested in converting between angular phase shift and time, let's assume both these waveforms have a frequency of 60 Hz and a period of approximately 16.7 milliseconds. 28 degrees inside a 16.7 millisecond period corresponds to a leftward time shift of roughly 1.3 milliseconds as this operation chain illustrates. 12 degrees inside a 16.7 millisecond period corresponds to a rightward time shift of roughly 555.6 microseconds as this operation chain illustrates. This means that the current waveform zero crossing going positive would lag approximately 1.85 milliseconds behind the voltage waveform zero crossing going positive. If you wanted to check your work, 1.85 milliseconds inside a 16.7 millisecond period corresponds to an angular shift of roughly 40 degrees, as we'd expect. If you're still thirsty for some more relative phase shift example problems, feel free to tackle this additional set. Don't be hard-headed and unnecessarily complicate this ordinarily simple task. Just look at the pictures. Which waveform is in front of the other, and by how much?
Let's assume voltage is in red and current is in blue. Let's assume everybody's got a frequency of 60 Hz and a period of 16.7 milliseconds. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have arrived at the following results. For example, problem 1, given the voltage waveform in red has a phase shift of 0 degrees and the current waveform in blue has a phase shift of negative 90 degrees, it can be said that current lags voltage by 90 degrees. As we'll learn in later lectures, this is the typical response for purely inductive elements. For example, problem 2, given the voltage waveform in red has a phase shift of 0 degrees and the current waveform in blue has a phase shift of positive 90 degrees, it can be said that current leads voltage by 90 degrees. As we'll learn in later lectures, this is a typical response for purely capacitive elements. The remaining example problems make use of voltage and current waveforms that both include phase shifts. For example, problem 3, given the voltage waveform in red has a phase shift of negative 32 degrees and the current waveform in blue has a phase shift of positive 14 degrees, it can be said that current leads voltage by the absolute difference of 46 degrees. For example, problem 4, given the voltage waveform in red has a phase shift of negative 15 degrees and the current waveform in blue has a phase shift of negative 25 degrees, it can be said that current lags voltage by the absolute difference of 10 degrees. For example, problem 5, given the voltage waveform in red has a phase shift of positive 60 degrees and the current waveform in blue has a phase shift of positive 40 degrees, it can be said that current lags voltage by the absolute difference of 20 degrees. Finally, for example, problem 6, given the voltage waveform in red has a phase shift of negative 45 degrees and the current waveform in blue has a phase shift of negative 27 degrees, it can be said that current leads voltage by the absolute difference of 18 degrees. All right, three more bonus round relative phase shift problems before I cut you loose. Be warned, these aren't as easy as they look and are meant to illustrate some peculiarities you might encounter as well as establish some standard operating procedures when you do. For the first example problem on the top, the voltage waveform in red has a phase shift of positive 22 degrees and the current waveform in blue also has a phase shift of positive 22 degrees. What's the relative phase shift between them? The answer is that there is no relative phase shift since they've both got a phase shift of positive 22 degrees. Voltage and current simultaneously peak and valley because they are in phase with one another. This is characteristic of purely resistive elements. For the second example problem in the middle, voltage waveform V1 in red has a phase shift of positive 90 degrees and the voltage waveform V2 in yellow has a phase shift of negative 90 degrees. What's the relative phase shift between them? The answer is that they are perfectly out of phase with one another since they're 180 degrees apart. Positive 180 or negative 180 doesn't make a difference since they're totally opposite of each other. V1 peaks when V2 valleys and vice versa. As we'll learn in later lectures, this occasion of equal and opposite voltages can be encountered in resonant circuits. Finally, for the third example problem on the bottom, looks like we've got three voltage waveforms, L1 in black, L2 in red, and L3 in blue. We're assuming L1 in black is our reference waveform and it has a phase shift of zero degrees. L2 in red has a phase shift of negative 120 degrees and can be said to lag L1 by 120 degrees. We're given an option for L3 in blue. Does L3 lag L1 by 240 degrees or does it lead it by 120 degrees? As we've previously demonstrated, negative 240 degrees is equivalent to positive 120 degrees, but what is the preferred means of expressing this relative phase shift? The answer is, L3 leads L1 by positive 120 degrees since it's easier to conceptualize positive 120 degrees than negative 240 degrees. The point being that phase shift is typically expressed between 0 and 180. Above 180 in one direction is better represented as below 180 in the other. Given this relationship, it can be said that L2 lags L1 by 120 and L3 leads L1 by 120. Similarly, it can be said that L1 leads L2 by 120 
and L3 lags L2 by 120. Coming at this from yet another angle, it can also be said that L1 lags L3 by 120, and L2 leads L3 by 120. The point being that these three waveforms all have a relative shift of 120 degrees between each other and represent a balanced system. As we'll learn in later lectures, the occasion of three otherwise identical voltage waveforms with 120 degree relative shifts between them is a characteristic of three-phase AC, a common means of industrial power distribution, and truly one of my favorite topics. All right, that's about enough for today. Hopefully you did well in the last set of example problems. This might seem like an easy exercise for some of you. However, in my experience, I've found a not insignificant number of students that struggle with this because they try to develop some shortcut that always backfires on them. Here's a shortcut that always works. Draw a picture and look at it. Don't make this hard and don't mess it up because as we'll learn in later lectures, relative phase shift between voltage and current is critical in determining the nature of an unknown element's impedance as well as calculating apparent, real, and reactive power for elements in larger AC circuits. All this and more awaits. Until then, you'll be happy to know that this kind of completes our discussion of sine waves. Over the past handful of lectures, we've looked at circles, angles, radians, the sine function itself, the inverse sine function, peak values, peak to peak values, effective and RMS values, period, frequency, time dependent sinusoidal analysis, and now phase shift and relative phase shift. You'd think that'd be all there is to know about sine waves, but it isn't. There's a lot more fascinating stuff out there, but the truth is absolutely none of it has any bearing to an aspiring electromechanical technician. In summary, the material as I've presented in this short sequence is the absolute minimum skill set necessary for survival. If you are still shaky about any of this material, by all means rewind, revisit, and review it until you are ready to enter the jungle. Before we bring this lecture to a close, allow me a moment to wave a lit torch in the face of educators and students worldwide. Snap out of it and quit doing this because it's wrong. At times in my life, I have been labeled a heretic for the simple act of pointing out an obvious fallacy to the brainwashed sheep around me. Case in point, my grade school teacher labeled me so because I refused to accept the commonly held delusion that the world has seven continents. My teacher pointed to a map and said, North America, South America, Africa, Australia, Antarctica, Europe, Asia. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I stood up and said, no, there are six continents, North America, South America, Africa, Australia, Antarctica, Eurasia, one, two, three, four, five, six. In addition to proving her wrong, I further went on to tell her she was simply parroting the politically expedient division of Europe and Asia into separate continents to reflect the political divisions of our world at the time and not those properties that actually define a continent. This precociousness did not endear me to her, but I would not yield to falsehood. I know the world has six continents, and you can't tell me it doesn't. Which brings us to the incorrect time domain representation of sine waves as traditionally presented to first year engineering technicians. I know this is wrong. I will not accept it's right, and neither should you. For some reason, textbooks traditionally represent time variant sine functions in this fashion. V of t equals voltage peak times the sine of 2 pi times the frequency times the time of interest plus or minus the phase shift, where 2 pi is intended to convey the product of frequency and time into radians, yet phase shift is still expressed in units of degrees. This is wrong and will always be wrong. To put it another way, this is not right and will never be right. The point being, you cannot mix radians and degrees. Pick one and stick with it. For my purposes, I use degrees and degrees only, as should you. If you're one of those old-timey folks that still reads newspapers printed on paper and makes and receives calls using a landline, by all means, use radians like all the other old fossils out there, but all the cool kids nowadays are using degrees. In pursuit of a brighter future, I am asking you to do your small part by 
publicly burning any textbook or subjecting your teacher to an expedient military tribunal if they use this incorrect general format. You cannot mix radians and degrees, and suggesting you can is criminally unbecoming. All right, that's about enough for today. In conclusion, this lecture presented time-variant sinusoidal waveforms, including positive or negative angular phase shift. Additionally, we examined sinusoidal waveforms that lead or lag one another. Remember to review this material as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates. Thank <laughs> you.